Okay. Let's move into the third question of the evening from I Need Advice in Norton Shores. And I Need Advice says, my husband and I are buying a duplex as an investment property in Kent County. There are tenants already in the house. The seller mm -hmm. says they are long-term tenants who pay. And based on that, we'd like for the tenants to stay. What do we need to do to protect ourselves and make sure that the seller is telling us the truth? From Need Advice in Norton Shores, Michigan. Yeah, I mean, that's relatively common these days with real estate investors, a lot of people getting into the business. And, um, you know, first of all, it's a duplex. Uh, mm -hmm. But let me, let me just share with you, you know, the mechanics of these deals are the same no matter if you're buying you know, 500 units or two units or even one unit. You, you ask to see a copy of the lease. You should have an attorney review the leases. Mm -hmm. You ask to see a payment ledger from the uh, seller to verify that the payments are being made on time. And then the most important thing you do, well, there's two important things. The other thing that you do is you're going to need to make uh, sure that the seller makes certain statements that he hasn't negotiated or changed those leases uh, or made any representations outside of the scope of the actual written document, okay? Mm -hmm. That there's been no oral changes or representations made to these tenants. I have a, a document I use quite often for these transactions, okay? That's, that's really important. But I gotta tell you a really important thing to make sure that the seller's telling the truth is that when you go and do the inspection of the property, you're going to meet these tenants. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a bigger transaction and you got multiple, multiple units, the seller doesn't really deal with those, right? It's just a management company. And all you can do there is you get what we call a rent roll. And that rent roll, is, you know, the, the landlord signs off on the rent roll saying that this is true and accurate. Otherwise, it's a form of fraud, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but... But just, you know, in a smaller deal like this, you go in and you talk to the tenants, say hello, let them know that you're possibly buying the property. And you'll, you'll hear everything about your seller, you know, from the tenant. If they're yes. good tenants, right? I mean, you're smiling. We, all, we always do. Our, right. Yeah, they love to spill the beans. <laughs> right. Now, also, there are times that you'll find out that there's, uh, the one thing is, uh, you know, the smaller units, the seller, the, pardon me, the tenants, if they're long paying tenants there, they don't want a uh, rental increase and they're very nervous about a new seller, uh, pardon me, a new buyer, a new yes. owner. And you may have them say, well, I don't care who owns the property. I just want to know that you're not going to pay the rent. And you're going to honor the lease. You know, you'll have that. And you'll see who's really committed to, you know, being good tenants, et cetera. You're going to see how the condition of the property uh, how it reflects the care that the owner is given or how the tenants live. You know, I once had a mentor years ago who'd say, if you want to want to figure out if you're going to have a good tenant in the property uh, and they make an application, let's say, to move into your property, go to where they're living currently and see yes. how they live there. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. This told to me by a smart guy who, owns, who owned like well over 50 units. You know, and I always thought that was really smart. Mm -hmm. He'd take the rental application. He didn't care. He never even looked at the rental. He'd look at one thing about the rental, which was the previous address. And he'd drive there. If he really liked the people, he'd drive there and see how they lived. Mm -hmm. If they had crap all over their front lawn and they were, you know, uh, yelling and screaming or whatever it was at the other place, and he never had them come back, you know? But, but I'm getting off track a little bit, and we all go down these rabbit holes. I think the best thing to do to protect yourself is to do your due diligence. Due diligence in, involves making sure you have leases, making sure that you have, uh, another thing, an assignment of those leases, mm -hmm. okay? If you close without an assignment of the lease, it's worthless. So you have to have an assignment of the lease from the landlord. The other thing is there's some issues related to, well, who gets the, who gets the last month's rent? Who gets the security deposit during the time frame yep. that this home is sold? So there's quite a few things that have to be worked out, usually, you know, if you're a newer purchaser, you're going to want to have an attorney, a real estate attorney, help you with that. Some simple addendums, um, representations that need to be made. And as you become and progress as a, a more seasoned investor, you won't need to have an attorney to help you with that. You'll do it on your own. Mm -hmm. You know?
but um, that's how you protect yourself. Okay. Well, that's good.